Hi everybody, I'm Glyn Dewis and in this video I've got a really cool and super realistic technique to share with you showing how to use the healing brush in Photoshop to reduce skin shine but also keep the exact same skin texture. Okay, so here on the screen you can see a very shallow depth of field portrait. It was shot around F2 and this is of a guy called Femi who attended a recent seminar I gave in Petersfield in the UK. Now, if you want to see the full behind the scenes showing the lighting I used in the picture and the complete setup, make sure you visit my website at glyndewis.com. I'll also put a link in the description part of this video. As for the retouching side of things though, here's the picture pretty much out of camera where I've just added a little bit of colour correction, sharpening and just brighten the eyes a little bit. Now at this stage though, I want to reduce the shine on Femi's skin, especially over his nose, forehead and the cheek area here. And this was just caused by the room we're working in being quite warm. Now let's tackle the nose first. So over in the layers panel, I'm going to add a new blank layer and I'll rename that layer to Nose. Now I'm going to use the healing brush to actually do this. Now when we're using the healing brush, just like with any other tool, when we choose it at the top of the screen we've got the options bar where we have a number of specific options available to us for that particular tool. Now one of the things I need to change, first of all where it says mode, we've got a number of different blend modes we can use. For this technique we're going to change it to darken. Now because we're going to be doing this technique on a blank layer, we need to change where it says sample to current and below, or even just all layers, but definitely not leave it at current layer. The reason for this is because as we're using a blank layer, Photoshop kind of needs to be led by the hand and told that there are pixels elsewhere in the layer stack, otherwise it will only look in this layer and it will say there's nothing to work on. So just change the, the actual sample to current and below. So now, when we use the Healing Brush tool, all we need to do is hold down the Alt or Option key and click on an area of skin that is good, clean and unaffected. So I'm going to choose an area just above the shine on Femi's nose, hold down the Alt key, we get this little target and I then click down. And now you can see when I move my cursor around, I've sampled that area of skin. To use the Healing Brush then, all we do is simply brush over the area we want to affect. Now because we changed the blend mode of the actual healing brush to darken, what it's actually doing here is it's only going to darken areas of the skin that are brighter than the area that I used as the sample. And this is just a great way of making sure the healing brush only affects area of skin that need to be affected and doesn't work on areas that are actually already pretty good. Now you can see at the moment we've reduced the shine completely on Femi's nose. That looks a little bit unrealistic. We definitely need to see some kind of shine. So all I'm going to do then is get my move tool and then just change the, the actual opacity of the nose layer down to maybe around about 50% or even 40%. So now when I turn that layer on and off, you can see that we can still see a little bit of that shine, but it has reduced it quite a bit. So I'm pretty good. Yeah, I think we'll leave it around about 40%. So now let's tackle the actual forehead and the cheek. So just like before, I'm going to add a new blank layer. I'll rename this to something like uh, Shine, like so. And again, I'm going to use the Healing Brush. Now again, we'll hold down the Alt key or Option key on Mac and just sample a nice area of clean skin to the side of the Shine, like so. And then I'm just literally just lifting up and pressing down and painting over the areas that have actually got this Shine on it. I just want to reduce this quite a bit. So we'll go to something like that. And we'll also do it down his cheek, so I'll affect, so I'll just sample an area of the cheek that hasn't got the shine on it, and just place a few dabs like so. Now when I turn that layer on and off, you can see that we've definitely reduced the shine, however, you'll probably notice now when I zoom in, that not only have we reduced the shine, but we've also lost a lot of the skin texture, and it's starting to look quite smudgy. So just like before when we used the actual healing brush on the nose, we could now reduce the opacity of this uh, healing brush layer here down to around maybe 50%. And you can see even that is looking pretty good. But again, it doesn't look realistic when I zoom in because we have definitely lost some of the sharpness in the skin texture. So here's how we can actually get that back. I'm going to click on the background layer, the original layer that we brought into Photoshop, hold down my Control on PC or Command key on Mac and press J to create a duplicate. Let's just rename that layer there to Texture. Okay, now I'll then move that layer to the top of the layer stack and I can do that by simply dragging it like so, clicking and dragging and then dropping, 
or a very quick way of doing it as well, hold down the control key or command key and then use the right square brackets to move that layer up through the layer stack. You can also use the left bracket key to bring it down a little bit as well, but we'll just quickly take it right to the top like so. Now I'm going to go to the filter menu and choose convert for smart filters because I'm going to use a filter now to bring back the texture. Then we're going to go to filter, other and high pass. And in here, when we zoom in, if I just zoom into the picture, you can see that we get this kind of gray covering on our image, but you'll start to see just very slightly some of the very sharp and contrasty areas of the picture starting to show through. Now at the moment I've got a pixel radius here of around about four. If I set it to one, you'll see that we can just about see some of that texture shining through, but not a horrendous amount. So I'll just try four and then click OK. Let's just close that down. All right, let's just zoom out a little bit. And then what we need to do now to get rid of the gray, but to be able to see this texture here, the sharp contrasty areas, is change the blend mode from normal to maybe overlay. You could also try soft light and hard light. Just try those to see what you prefer. But I think for this one, I'm liking to use overlay. Now, when we zoom in then, let's have a look at the forehead and the cheek and we turn that on and off, we can see that we really have now added in some texture. However, that texture has also been applied to other areas of the skin. We need to restrict this texture only to be on the areas that we actually applied the original healing brush to. So there's a number of ways we could do that. The first way is we could actually add a black layer mask first of all by holding down the Alt key on PC or Option key on Mac clicking on the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel to now hide the results of actually getting that texture back and then just using a white brush to paint the texture back in. And that works pretty good. However, you could accidentally, just on the outsides of the brush, end up brushing over other parts of the skin that we didn't need to affect. So another way you could do it is by using a clipping mask. Now let me just get rid of this layer mask here. So take us back to where the texture has now been affecting the whole picture. Now all I'm going to do is hold down the Alt key on PC or Option key on Mac and put my cursor between the top texture layer and the healing brush, the shine layer directly below. And when I do that, you'll notice over in the layers panel, we get like a square box with a down facing arrow. So when I click now on this little line between these two layers, we click on it and we'll notice the texture layer moves across and we do now have this down arrow pointing to the layer directly below. Basically what the clipping mask means is that what's on the top layer will only be visible on the visible parts of the layer directly below it. And when we look at that layer below, all we have are the healing brush layers. So this texture now is only going to be showing on the areas where we applied the healing brush. So now look, when we actually turn this layer top layer on and off, we can see, hopefully you can see this on your screen. Let me just zoom in just to maybe a touch more. If I turn that layer on and off, you can see now that we do have the shine reduced, but we have actually got some of that texture back. Now the reason we used a smart filter was so that you could have the flexibility, if you wanted to, of increasing or decreasing the amount of texture showing through. So let's just open up that layer here where we can see the filter, the high pass filter. If we double click on that now, it brings up our original settings in high pass. So you could, if you wanted to, increase the amount or even decrease it, just so that you can actually get the settings to be exactly how you want. So that smart filter gives you a heck of a lot of flexibility. But let's close that down. Let's double click on the hand tool to zoom back out. Now to show you the before and after, let's just come down to the background layer, turn that on before, after, before, and after. We've reduced the shine, not got rid of it completely because that wouldn't look realistic, but we've definitely reduced it now so that the eye doesn't get drawn to it too much. Now, of course, Photoshop being Photoshop, there are seemingly limitless ways that you can do the same thing. But this is just another way, another little technique, rather, that you can add to your Photoshop bag of tricks. But I think you'll agree, it's incredibly simple, quick, and effective. Okay, folks, if you've enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you clicked on the thumbs up icon below. And if you like the channel and the content I'm sharing, click on the subscribe button. That should really say favorite. And then you'll never miss one of the free videos I share on an almost weekly basis. And hey, I'd really appreciate it if you could share this video and this channel with others as well. But for now, folks, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you next time.